Should we move on to like the final to the final aspect of Adro? Yeah. Yeah. So there's, like, there's a lot of like aggro decks that don't feel conventionally aggro because either they're like super narrow and they want a specific playstyle, or they're not they're not what you think of when you think of aggro, especially if those of us who played the sixty card formats. Uh, yeah, so... the, it's just super duper unique, and it's like you no, know, you'll see it every now and then. So like a Eula is like one of those things where it's like what she's aggro. I'm like yeah, essentially you're gonna you're gonna be playing a lot of two mana bears so and that's low to the ground. It's the wide going the wide aspect. Yeah, not as wide as tokens, but yeah, you're still going wide, and then eventually, you know, you can start stacking plus one plus one counters, and then so she definitely feels like the role of Stompy, but she's like not as Stompy as a traditional Stompy deck. But it's 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 really weird because it's like, you know. It's kind of like a weird hybrid, just like Stompy is, but uh, you're dedicated to bears, so it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, she's a fun aggro deck, but a lot of people don't underestimate her, guys. Yeah, you know, she definitely, she definitely can put in work. Whenever I play against Ayula, like, it does, it does so much work that it needs to. It's, it's just, it's like my one of my worst matchups. <laughs> well, it's also, it's also because you play a lot of mana dorks, and Ayula just like, or hate you know, bears. Or hate bears, yeah, but it's just like you know she'll um she she'll kill a one one mana dork no problem, and then eventually you know you stack the counters onto your other bears or herself, and then you'll start fighting the hate uh you know the hate bears, which really really gives you a hard time for your play style. So yeah, you know I you will definitely give her you know give her a look if you're if you're looking to play something that's like a little bit more under the radar. Uh, there's also another one, Saucia. Oh, Saucia is cool. Um, so I feel like the peak of like four color of like aggro. Well, that that is like the the reason why they made her right. Like, oh, what's like what's lacking blue? Oh, aggression. That is what Saskia is. So it's like you can either um, pick the same person and really really hate somebody, or you can kind of you know pick another player and let you you know spread that damage out and then like you know KO uh, two people simultaneously, or at least um, in theory, anyways. Another cool way is too is like you know if a if a player has a was it propaganda ghostly prison, well you can just pick that player as your target and then still get somebody else and they'll still get that damage uh, dealt to them. And then you can try to politic them like, hey look, I just I need to damage you so then I so I can get through to the other guy, and then <laughs> you're taking out two birds with one stone and then and then they're like, oh yeah 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 I want the other guy to get damaged. Oh yeah, like secretly, right? Like yeah, like secretly po politic your way. Be like, you know, help me out here, man. Like you know, he's our common enemy. But secret, but you know, little do they know that like you're also little him now. And the cool thing about Saskia too is that like she's so flexible. You can play tokens with Saskia. You can go Stompy with Saskia. You can go Voltron if you really want to, or like, not necessarily Voltroning Saskia herself. But you can play a lot of like you know, very sticky creatures that have hexproof or indestructible. And then you suit them up, you know, because chances are people will probably want to kill Saskia. But yeah, at the same time, you probably could play things that protect her. Um, you're, you got the color to do so. But at the same time, you could also metagame where it's like, hey, if you kill my Saskia, if I play her again, I'm choosing you. Don't do it. You know, so Saskia is a fun one for sure. Uh, then there's Edric. Yeah, Edric's another weird one where it's like you play a lot of really bad and weird evasive creatures like flying men and you get rewarded for going wide kind of like tokens and then but the thing though is that um instead of like playing anthems which you could but there's not that many though like um you're mostly playing edric to to chain together extra turn spells and then keep you know death by a thousand cuts and try to draw like as many cards as you can so that's why edric's kind of like a little bit of oddball are you natural order into a greater health behemoth? Yeah, oh yeah, you could. Yeah. yeah, you could do that too. Or, or hey, we gotta think. We gotta think big. It. Uh, what's the other one? The uh, finale devastation. You can. You can also do that too. Oh yeah, you could. Yeah, finale devastation is another good. Another good post spell. I was just and here I was just thinking about playing like you know overrun right, just turning all your flying men to four fours. <laughs> it's not very good, but it's something. It's overrun. Overrun's great for budget decks. It's fantastic. Yeah, but yeah, uh, Ed, Ed, yeah. Edric doesn't do a lot of damage, and it, it, it's it's 
It's an aggro deck. We already said this. It's an aggro deck. It just doesn't look like an aggro deck. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then it's also Azuri. Uh, yeah, the same and then colors. Azuri is interesting too because it's like uh, so similar to Edric. You want to play a lot of like small creatures, and the thing is like you could either play the flying men or you you could play um, interesting utility creatures or even tokens. Um, you know, we need tokens anyways. And you stack up all these um, experience counters, and then you start going tall with them. So Azuri is like this weird hybrid of Stompy, right? You want you kind of want to go wide, but you start slowly growing them up, and then you go like you know pseudo Voltroni, depending on how many experience counters and plus one plus one counters you can stack up. So Azuri is cool. Um, definitely be careful though, because you know he's one of those guys where it's like it's very unassuming uh, until like oh he's got. You know, five plus experience counters. Ooh, oh, is that a sage of, you know, sage of fables, whatever, or whatever the the sage card is, sage of hours? And it was like, oh, I guess we're, he's taking extra turns and he's gonna beat us to death. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. And then I guess the last one, uh, Jericho, which plays very similar to uh, Edric, but she's locked into strictly ninjas. And uh, unlike Edric, when she connects with you or any of her units, what's really neat is that she uh, drains you. She, d she does the damage, and was like that's what makes her so good. And it's not even just to that opponent; it's to each opponent. And so, like, she's got this like really cool niche deck building strategy where like you want to play a lot of basic creatures, you know, to to help your ninjutsu guys, and then you ninjutsu out switching to your ninjas, and then you also want to play like really really. F fat chunky spells to chunk people down for lots of damage um you don't have to go that crazy high in terms of like cmc but i've seen some people do some funny stuff like you know they're willing to play draco which is like what 16 man or something like that is it? something ridiculous yeah yeah draco. Yeah. yeah something ridiculous like and then like, it's unplayable but you do it just but people play it because they want to see it flipped, flipped over and then doming people for 16 damage so nirko's really interesting um you know, she's like she's got tribal stuff with ninjas, flying men, high CMC stuff. Oh, we're on Kindred now, sir. Oh, oh yes, I forgot Kindred. Oh, I like Kindred more than I like Typo. Typo sounded. Oh, Typo's Typo sounds weird. Um, yeah, yeah, but Kindred does sound better. Um, but now I'm kind of curious because uh, does that mean that we're gonna get Kindred sorceries now and Kindred like enchantments actually brought back? For sure. That. Yeah, that'd be that'd be cool. Pretty cool. I don't know what set's gonna happen though. Warwin. Is he the Warwin? Or I don't know why, but Bloom I wanna Burrow. say like oh maybe Bloomborough? I was thinking of Modern Horizons. But yeah. We're oh, getting yeah. a little off tangent, but yeah, those are like the uh um those are essentially just, just the aggro decks, uh pretty much like you got your three major over archetypes, right? You either go extremely wide Kind of middle in between with Stompy. And then you also uh, go super tall with Voltron. And then you have a couple outliers. Um, you know, where it's like kind of like really niche. So. Yeah. And the, the point of this was just to get you guys like an understanding of what's going on in each of the decks. Because you can build any of these decks for like low budget to high budget, honestly. Oh, yeah. And so oh. a lot of people are, are stuck on like. How much money they should spend on a deck rather than what is their deck trying to do and so we, we're hoping that this gave you guys a better idea of what your deck is trying to do and if you understand that you can apply that knowledge to other decks you want to build exactly so um and then once you kind of like build your deck you can kind of fine tune it to playing however you like or your play group your meta game stuff like that because sometimes, um, you know, not every playgroup or local game store loves to play combos, but aggro decks, aggro decks are very, very fair. If anything, they might be arguably the weakest archetype because, yes, you have to chew through 120 life. But t take that, you know, as an advantage where people are going to underestimate you. And then they're not, they're not going to, you know, expect you, like, you know, coming out of the gates blazing and, you know, doing 20 damage with, like, a Stompy deck or something like that. Or you go so wide that, you know, landing a crater hoof is lethal. Yeah, it's a little bit boring, but, like, you know, 
hey, you're not, at least you're not playing a, you know, a combo deck and people feel like they're, you know, you know, cheated out of a game where it's like, oh, they had no agency because they didn't have the counter spell in time. Yeah. Uh, as we wrap it up, are there any tips you want to give people who want to try playing aggro? Um, for me, I think my thing is like, don't be afraid to attack. Honestly, like if yeah. you see a person who's open, get in that chip damage, you know. And then if a person like you know gets like really sassy about, it, just tell them like, well, you're open and get him again. Yeah, like I'll, I'm here. Like that, that's literally gonna... what we did. <laughs> yeah, I'm just I'm just here. Like yeah, it's it's like you're open. Like, am I not supposed to attack you? Like, yes, you're not supposed to attack him, so he can combo off. Don't you know how to play Commander, bro? I, I always laugh because it's like... <laughs> oh, excuse me. Um, I, was, I always laugh because it's like, it's always the combo players who always like whine about it. And it's like, oh, and then like you leave them alone and then they win. And it's like, well, the whole point of it's like, I'm, I'm this is my one moment to interact with you. It's a, like, you know, rush you down. And... Yeah, no, that's my one tip. It's like, don't be scared to attack people. Get in that chip damage wherever you can. Um, of course, if you're worried about crackback stuff, yes, you know, take that into consideration. But as an aggro deck, you need to squeeze in as much damage as you can at every oppor opportune moment. So, or uh, opportunity. Opportunity, yeah. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, I'd also agree with that too. Like, um, you do need a be more efficient, not efficient, but uh, proactive with your board, because when you're not proactive, you're you're missing out damage. Like if you have four damage that you can deal with to a player, and you're not swinging and you're not dealing that to someone else, like like what Victor was saying, you have to go through 120 or more life it uh, or points of damage that you have to deal to your opponents. And every it's like every penny counts, every damage counts. Also, if you see like someone with a blocker, uh. If it's like a mana dork, you gotta swing. You gotta swing and force them to block. And of course, they're not gonna block with a mana dork because they want to ramp. So yeah, like well, you can definitely leverage leverage that. Like you know, it's a game of chicken, right? Yeah, you got read. Be able to. Re I think like don't be afraid to swing. And then reading the board to see like like if someone has mana rock, what I usually do is I swing at that person because. I'm like, or if if they're mana, if they're ramping harder than I am, then I sw I just swing at them and like, yeah, you're ramping harder than me, and it's like, th most of the time they understand like, okay, yeah. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> oh. It depends on the person. I think it depends. Uh, everyone, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it really, really depends. Um, uh, and also like, uh, if you see somebody who uses life as a resource make it hurt because that's that's what got our our, our meta game to kind of evolve because like we played a lot of like greedy mana bases pain lands and stuff like that uh things that pay life to draw cards um yeah it's just uh so it's it's always fun when you like you know if you dealt that four damage they can't draw that extra card with sylvan library right mm -hmm. right so um or like in you know, a black market connection say they, they uh they're gonna have to really really think about it it's like ooh. Can I really go full send and pay six life to get all three? No, I have to pick, kind of pick and choose. And the, the best thing too is, it's always so fun, is when like our friend Jan, where he's he has both Fire and Arena and like Black Market connections out, and he's like down really low, and it's like those are mandatory triggers. You make them make them feel sad that they have to lose a life from Fire and Arena and they have to pick something from the Black Market connections. And it'll all be worth it in the end when they lose to a Mana Crypt flip. Oh yes, yes, <laughs> those are always fun. Or like the the funniest thing is like you know they're so low, and then I'm like, hey, are you gonna pay that four mana to untap your mana vault, or are you gonna take the one? <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, like I know it sounds silly, but like you will get games like those, depending on your power level, of course. But like you know, if you squeeze out the damage, like um, you you really make them feel it. It's it makes aggro so much more fulfilling and actually building off that point my advice would be don't be afraid to hit the same player multiple times if need be oh yeah that that, that too is very because, important uh, yeah a lot of people feel like they're bullying another player when they do that but yo dude's just open and yeah so the most mm -hmm. optimal play is to take that line 
You have to but... chomp on them. You can't. Sorry. Yeah, you really do. You just gotta sink your teeth in. Like, okay, yeah, there may be a, 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 you know, every now and then you will run into like an arch enemy thing where it's like you should let go of that person and then turn your attention over to the the arch enemy because they're, they're a little bit too strong. But it, it depends. That's why, like you know, Mitchell said earlier, you have to be able to read the situation. So you know, don't don't get too much tunnel vision, but you should gauge where. Okay, person's ramping way harder than I am. They're going to play bigger bombs than you, so you need to take them out as fast as you can, so that you can like you know set yourself up for the, uh, a better late game versus everybody. Or, you know, if you know someone's playing like a commander who is like more controlly and has tons of board wipes, yeah, I would say it's fair game to take them out because you know they have the highest chance of board wiping you and sending you back to the Stone Age. So you know you kind of have to pick and choose, and it's a all these things like take time to learn, um, so you know, don't feel flustered playing aggro. You might you might lose or you might come second or third, quite a bit, but you know it's a it's a it's a learning experience. Yeah, I would also say that like from experience because now that I remember, I did have an aggro deck. It was Traxos, <laughs> to an extent. Like oh yes, he was. <laughs> Just a weird well, attack. No, but Traxos was a menace because it was like three hits and it's got trample. And then four, like four it, drop, seven seven trampler. It was uh, so here's the thing though, it's like you had so many rocks, like I think uh, you consistently got out like turn three and sometimes even turn two if you had the mana vault. Like it's 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 funny. Yeah. It and and with that, it's like you have to, because it's like if it the faster you get rid of one opponent like, the easier it gets to get rid of the nets. If that makes yeah, sense. It, it's less cards against you. Less resources against you. Just be prepared for the mental salt. Yeah. <laughs> and if you don't want to deal with it, I think it might be better if you actually don't play aggro. Yeah. Because if you opt not to play aggressively, you're basically already choosing to lose. Yeah, you have to kind of commit. Um, you know, you can't really half-ass it because if you do, then you know you're already having the biggest challenge ever: 120 life to chew through. Maybe even more against life gain decks. And or um, more, more commit more damage. It's not just 120. Yeah. Yeah, because some people have uh, like have life gain, or or mm -hmm. fog effects where it's like or block. Just blocking will mess. Oh up. yeah. Yeah, yeah, blocking too, yeah. It's like, people will have jump blockers and other stuff like that. So, you know, it's like, it's a lot of skill. A lot of people say, her, her, der, der, like, you know, whatever, like, aggro is so easy. I'm like, not always. Like, there's a lot of thought to it. So. Alright. I was, yeah, I was just say, like, you know, it's a learning experience. Like, you kind of have to commit, and over time, like, don't feel discouraged. Um... You know, just try your best to kind of, like, get the feel for it. If, um, if people are kind of, like, being salty about it, then hopefully you can point them to this video and they'll understand why, you oh. know? <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. I'm antagonistic already. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Um, I don't got much else to say about the topic. I think we did no. a pretty good job. Yeah. No, I th I think that's pretty much it. Like you know, give aggro a chance, guys, because it's a it's a fun it's a fun play style to play for sure. All right, so let's wrap it up. Yeah. With that being said, uh, uh we're we're signing off. Uh, Chris, wake up, people. Make sure to like and follow on the this Rumble channel. And if you're on, if you're seeing this on YouTube or somewhere else, make sure you like or subscribe there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, you can go ahead and go first. Oh, uh, I'm Mit, uh, Blueberry Lover or Mitchell. Uh, you can find me at Mohaw Shonen. That's where this is also going to be uploaded. And then also at my uh, music channel, uh, Blueberry Lover. I don't know if you didn't uh, see the. I did look load it up and see like how you type it, <laughs> but there you go. 
That's sweet. Uh, yeah, and this is Victor, uh, also known as Massive Banana, also on the Maho Shonen. Um, and then also you can follow me on my Moxfield, which is like Massive underscore Banana. Um, I'm actually in the process of like um, making some budget decks, so you might actually see me uh, post some of those or have some of them ready for a future thing. You know, you never know. Ooh. Uh, but yeah, because um, I'm pretty sure like some of you guys might have trouble building an aggro deck if you never built one so i might have something uh in store for you guys nice uh i think after this i, I might be streaming some path of exile just because there's a weird race going on but uh sounds good yep yeah, but if y'all don't want to stay enjoy your night enjoy your tomorrow and enjoy your thanksgiving oh yes Oh, must needed for sure. Yeah. All right. Signing Later, out. folks. Signing out.